Every year on April 1st, War Thunder puts on a multi-day event, and with 2021's April Fools just around the corner, I thought I'd look back over the last 8 years of War Thunder April Fools. Not all visuals are my own, please check the description for original links. The War Thunder official channel uploaded a new video announcing a brand new nation. In addition to being able to play Russia, USA, Britain, Germany and Japan, the Pony Nation was being added to War Thunder. The event allowed players to take control of five different ponies. Each pony had identical stats, but differed in colour. You could pick between the blue, orange, purple, white and yellow ponies. The ponies were armed with four 20mm Friend Mark III cannons with 200 rounds per gun. As secondary armament, the ponies could carry two 500kg hard candy bombs and up to eight Cracker 4 rockets. Shooting the Friend Mark III cannons would sound like a toy laser gun, and when you secured a kill with the ponies, they would explode into rainbow dust. What really set this event apart was these ponies were not just limited to special dedicated battles for events, and these incredibly powerful ponies would just let loose on random battles. The game became an ecstasy of colour for an entire day, and the ponies even let you get some progress through the grind. Probably one of the most unique events ever held in War Thunder and video games in general. Sadly, we've never seen the return of these iconic flying machines. Twenty fourteen's event was set in March nineteen forty five. The Burmese Nationalist Army engaged Japanese occupational forces in heavy fighting. After a drawn out battle and with allied support, Japanese forces were pushed back and in a desperate response deployed an experimental war machine, Daikaizu GD-11 Gaijilla. This April Fool's was to celebrate Gaijin's logo becoming a snail and was a reference to the 2014 Godzilla movie. Gaijilla crushed buildings and could shoot electronic beams from its eyes, but these beams would only damage buildings, not aircraft. The battle was a normal air battle and with all the normal objectives like destroying enemy fighters, but with a shared goal to defeat Gaijilla. You could only damage the snail with bombs or rockets and being the one who killed the snail would award you hundreds of thousands of silver lions, although the event was held on the dev server, so this didn't help anyone progress through the game. Twenty fifteen saw two separate ground based events. The first was called Unrealistic Battles and was making a joke of the different gameplay style World of Tanks has. The event revolved around inflatable tanks that fired high explosive potatoes and high velocity armor piercing carrots. Instead of crew and component damage models, the Shermans had hit points much like World of Tanks. A different camera's perspective really helped sell the joke. The inflatable Sherman was powered by four bicycles inside the tank and one man in the turret. The muzzle velocity of the potatoes and carrots was very low, which meant battles would devolve into close quarters slugfest. Sadly, the tanks were not amphibious, despite their inflatability. The second event of 2015 was equally as unique. March to Victory was a spoof on ATST walkers from Star Wars and introduced the American M35, the Russian Object 104 ST1, and the German Panzerkamp LFR 565 armored walkers. The premise of the event was that the walkers were initially of Russian design. The walkers resembled a KV 21 legs with the iconic 152mm howitzer. The Americans developed their own variants from three pre-production ST1s given to them by the Russians as part of the technology exchange program. German forces were able to capture several walkers and restore them ready for combat. For secondary armament, the walkers had access to one 45mm cannon and one 20mm cannon, as well as multiple machine guns chambered in their country's respective small arms calibre. These magnificent machines were available to play with a lineup in an event and caused absolute mayhem. Unlike the inflatable tanks, these walkers were amphibious simply just due to their height. 
The social media build up to the event was excellent as Gaijin hyped up the event with several photoshopped images. The War Thunder wiki is quite extensive and I'm not sure how much of it is officially by Gaijin, but apparently a certain glorious leader is planning to build their own walker. The anchor's on board and the cable's all stored To be rollicking randy dandy ho Soon we'll be whooping her out through the locks Way. With 2016 we saw naval in its earliest form Wooden galleons going toe to toe on the high seas To be rollicking randy dandy ho this event allowed players to take control of the Golden Hind, the second ship in the world to circumnavigate the globe, captained by Sir Francis Drake. The anchor's on board and the cables are stored. The original dev blog promised an entire British naval galleon tech tree line. The event came complete with pirate voice actors and binoculars were replaced with telescopes. There were even several pieces of music added specially for the event. 2016 was unique as it set a precedent for how April Fools would change focus to not only be a fun event but also a place for Gaijin to test new mechanics. Even leaving the map boundaries was different as instead of simply exploding, the mighty Kraken would devour your ship. Rank 9 was the next April Fools where modern main battle tanks and helicopters were available to play. This was way back in update 1.67 before even the T-64A was added to the game and this was the first introduction of functional smoke grenades. Middle East, a brand new map, was added specially for the event and eventually was added to the main game. Available to play was a Leopard 2A5, a T-90A, an Apache and a Hind. The 2A5 was at battle rating 14.0 equipped with DM-53 and its desert camouflage is still in the game today. The T-90A was 14.3 with 3 BM-60. The helicopters came equipped with 80 GMs and Dunfire rockets. The camera angle of the helicopters was off to one side instead of the direct behind view we have today. I quite like it and I almost wish we had this view today. Silent Thunder allowed players to take control of nuclear submarines. Sonar was the main aspect of the event where active and passive sonar had to be micromanaged in order to be able to detect enemy submarines while remaining stealthy yourself. The main weapon you had against enemy submarines were torpedoes manually guided by the player. The map was called Spitsbergen and was set in the icy waters off the coast of Svalbard. The objective was to capture one of the zones and doing so would make your team launch all of their intercontinental nuclear missiles. Presumably the world would be plunged into a nuclear winter so I'm not really sure they were winning. There was also a simpler team deathmatch game mode. Unlike other April Fools, submarines haven't made it to the game today and the event even made a return in October 2020, this time being called the Phantom Menace. 2018 was also the first time a market focused building event was introduced alongside April Fools. This event added a unique Tiger and P63. They're identical to the normal tech tree variants aside from a camouflage and premium bonuses. Silent Thunder is probably what most people remember but Hats Off To You is probably one of my favourite War Thunder events ever. Comically large hats were added to War Thunder as 3D decorations that could be applied to tanks. For completing challenges, players would be awarded a coupon for one of the hats randomly. Random battles were pretty hilarious for a couple days and I really liked the goofy nature of the event. You can still see these hats in the game today, although their size has been massively reduced. If you want to get a hat for yourself, they are available on the Gaijin market. Earth Thunder brought truly combined arms of air, land and sea to War Thunder. In this event, players took control of flying saucers and fought over an abandoned city. 
The objective was to hold A, B and C capture zones and each zone required a different type of flight mode to engage enemies. A was in the sky and needed to be secured in the flight mode where Saucers had a beam laser to destroy hostiles. B was in the city and was only accessible in hover mode as a giant shield blocked access from above. In hover mode you got an additional shield and your weapon was changed to a railgun. C was in an underwater cave system. When underwater, the flying saucer fired torpedoes and used a fragmentation cannon. 2019 brought back the wacky fun to April Fools and the added detail of everything being written in an alien language was great to see. A lot of people thought this event was to test VTOL and this is exactly what the new power update brought to the game in November 2020. Most recently, Space Thunder was 2020's April Fools event that ran between the 1st and the 6th of the month. The event focused around space and followed 2018's theme of a building event tied to it. The AU-1, Object 279, 20mm Puma and SGB were made available to grind. Space Thunder had four different ships to pick from, each with different weapons and maneuverability presets. Players battled around in Earth orbit for control of what seems to be a futuristic international space station. The sound design was excellent as it was consistent with how sound works in a real vacuum. Since there's no sound in space, all you could hear was your own thrusters, guns and when you collided with an object. The event featured unique art for double, triple and multi-kills. Double kill! Triple kill! Godlike! The Godlike Award is a reference to 1999 Unreal Tournament. Subscribe for Packet Loss Immunity and check out my other videos here.